Van Diemen's Land was the original name used by most Europeans for the island of Tasmania, part of Australia. The name was changed from Van Diemen's Land to Tasmania in 1856. Topic: History. Topic: Exploration. The Dutch explorer Abel Tasman was the first European to land on the shores of Tasmania in 1642. Landing at Blackman Bay and later having the Dutch flag flown at North Bay, Tasman named the island Anthonyj van Diemensland, in honour of Anthony van Diemen, the Governor-General of the Dutch East Indies, who had sent Tasman on his voyage of discovery. Between 1772 and 1798, only the southeastern portion of the island was visited. Tasmania was not known to be an island until Matthew Flinders and George Bass circumnavigated it in the Norfolk in 1798–99. Around 1784–85, Henri Peru de la Caudrenière, an army officer serving in Spanish Louisiana, wrote a "...memoir on the advantages to be gained for the Spanish crown by the settlement of Van Diemen's land." After receiving no response from the Spanish government, Peru proposed it to the French government, as Memoir sur les avantages qui résulteraient d'une colonie puissante à la terre de Diamant. In January 1793, a French expedition under the command of Antoine Raymond Joseph de Bruni d'Entrecasteaux anchored in Recherche Bay, and a period of five weeks was spent in that area, carrying out explorations into both natural history and geography. In 1802 and 1803, the French expedition commanded by Nicolas Baudin explored D'Entrecasteau Channel and Maria Island and carried out charting of Bass Strait Baudin had been associated, like Peru, with the resettlement of the Acadians from French Canada from mostly what is now called the New Brunswick area to Louisiana. <laughs> Early colonization Sealers and whalers based themselves on Tasmania's islands from 1798 and in August 1803, New South Wales Governor Philip King sent Lieutenant John Bowen to establish a small military outpost on the eastern shore of the Derwent River to forestall any claims to the island arising from the activities of the French explorers. Major General Ralph Darling was appointed Governor of New South Wales in 1825, and in the same year he visited Hobart Town, and on 3 December proclaimed the establishment of the independent colony, of which he became Governor for three days. The demonym for Van Diemen's Land was Van Diemonian, though contemporaries used the spelling Vandemonian. In 1856, the colony was granted responsible self government with its representative parliament, and the name of the island and colony was officially changed to Tasmania on 1 January 1856. <laughs> Penal colony Main articles, Port Arthur, Tasmania, convicts on the west coast of Tasmania from the 1800s to the 1853 abolition of penal transportation known simply as transportation. Van Diemen's Land was the primary penal colony in Australia. Following the suspension of transportation to New South Wales, all transported convicts were sent to Van Diemen's Land. In total, some 73,000 convicts were transported to Van Diemen's Land, or about 40% of all convicts sent to Australia. Male convicts served their sentences as assigned labour to free settlers or in gangs assigned to public works. Only the most difficult convicts mostly re were sent to the Tasman Peninsula prison known as Port Arthur. Female convicts were assigned as servants in free settler households or sent to a female factory women's workhouse prison. There were five female factories in Van Diemen's Land. Convicts completing their sentences or earning their ticket of leave often promptly left Van Diemen's Land. Many settled in the new free colony of Victoria, to the dismay of the free settlers in towns such as Melbourne. On 6 August 1829, the Brig Cyprus, a government-owned vessel used to transport goods, people, and convicts, set sail from Hobart Town for Macquarie Harbour Penal Station on a routine voyage carrying supplies and convicts. While the ship was becalmed in Recherche Bay, convicts allowed on deck attacked their guards and took control of the brig. The mutineers marooned officers, soldiers, and convicts who did not join the mutiny without supplies. The convicts then sailed the Cyprus to Canton, China, where they scuttled her and claimed to be castaways from another vessel. On the way, Cyprus visited Japan during the height of the period of severe Japanese restrictions on the entry of foreigners, the first Australian ship to do so. 
Tensions sometimes ran high between the settlers and the Vandemonians, as they were termed, particularly during the Victorian Gold Rush when a flood of settlers from Van Diemen's Land rushed to the Victorian goldfields. Complaints from Victorians about recently released convicts from Van Diemen's Land re-offending in Victoria was one of the contributing reasons for the eventual abolition of transportation to Van Diemen's Land in 1853. Name Anthony Trollope used the term Vandemonian. They are the Vandemonians united in their declaration that the cessation of the coming of convicts has been their ruin. In 1856, Van Diemen's Land was renamed Tasmania. This removed the unsavory criminal connotations with the name Van Diemen's Land and the demon connotation, while honoring Abel Tasman, the first European to find the island. The last penal settlement in Tasmania at Port Arthur closed in 1877. Topic: <laughs> Popular culture. Topic: <laughs> Film. The critically acclaimed award-winning film The Last Confession of Alexander Pierce tells the true story of Alexander Pierce through his final confession to fellow Irishman and colonial priest Philip Connolly. The film was nominated for a Rose d'Or, an Irish Film and Television Award, an Australian Film Institute Award and won an IF Award in 2009. The ABC telemovie The Outlaw Michael Howe is set in Van Diemen's Land and tells the story of Bushranger Michael Howe's convict-led rebellion. Topic. Music U2's 1988 album Rattle and Hum has a song called Van Diemen's Land, with lead vocals sung by The Edge. Tom Russell sets Van Diemen's Land as the ship's destination in his song, Isaac Lewis, on the album, Modern Art. In the traditional Irish folk song, The Black Velvet Band, the protagonist is found guilty of stealing a watch and is sent to Van Diemen's Land as punishment. The song, Van Diemen's Land, in the album titled, Parcel of Rogues, with vocals by Barbara Dixon is about an Irish man caught for poaching and transported to Van Diemen's Land and the hardships he has living there. Topic. Literature Australian winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature Patrick White's novel A Fringe of Leaves places much of the novel's beginnings in Van Diemen's Land. Van Diemen's Land is the setting for Richard Flanagan's novel Wanting 2008. Van Diemen's Land is the setting of Gold's Book of Fish, a novel in Twelve Fish by Richard Flanagan published 2002, which tells the story of a man who is transported to the island, and runs afoul of the local and rather insane authorities. Brendan Whiting's book Victims of Tyranny, gives an account of the lives of the Irish rebels, the Fitzgerald convict brothers who were sent to help open up the north of Van Diemen's Land in 1805, under the leadership of the explorer Colonel William Patterson. In Cormac McCarthy's novel Blood Meridian, one of the characters in the Glanton Gang of Scalpers in 1850s Mexico is a Van Diemenlander named Bathcat. Born in Wales he later went to Australia to hunt Aborigines, and eventually came to Mexico, where he used those skills on the Apaches. From the Potato Factory by Bryce Courtenay 1995. Subtracting till my fingers dropped, into Van Diemen's land. This is a quote from Emily Dickinson's poem, If You Were Coming in the Fall. Two of the main characters in Courtenay's novel are transported Van Diemen's Land as convicts and another travels there, where around half of the novel takes place. In the novel The Convicts by Ian Lawrence, young Tom Tin is sent to Van Diemen's Land on charges of murder. In the novel The Terror by Dan Simmons 2007. In this novel about the ill-fated exploration by HMS Erebus and HMS Terror to discover the Northwest Passage. The ships left England in May 1846 and were never heard from again, although since then much has been discovered about the fate of the 129 officers and crew. References are made to Van Diemen's Land during the chapters devoted to Francis Crozier. Van Diemen's Land is the setting of the novel English Passengers by Matthew Neal 2000, which tells the story of three eccentric Englishmen who in 1857 set sail for the island in search of the Garden of Eden. 
The story runs parallel with the narrative of a young Tasmanian who tells the struggle of the indigenous population and the desperate battle against the invading British colonists. Christopher Coke's novel Out of Ireland describes life as a convict in Van Diemen's land. Richard Butler's novel The Men That God Forgot 1977 is based on the historical events of ten convicts who escaped from Van Diemen's land to Valdivia, Chile in 1833. Marcus Clark used historical events as the basis for his fictional for the term of his natural life 1870, the story of a gentleman, falsely convicted of murder, who is transported to Van Diemen's land. Julian Stockwin's nautical fiction series, The Kid Series, includes the book Command 2006 in which Thomas Kidd takes a ship to Van Diemen's Land, at the behest of then-governor of New South Wales, Philip Gidley King, for the purpose of preventing French explorers from establishing a French settlement on the island. Kevin G. Dia's novel Dark Night in Van Diemen's Land tells the story of a young couple transported to the Port Arthur penal settlement. J. W. Clenet's 2015 graphic novel, The Demonois, is set during an alternate history in which Napoleon Bonaparte fakes his death and flees to West Van Diemen, an area of Tasmania colonized by France. The story takes place in the fictional city of Baden, where modern-day Stanley is located, named after French cartographer Nicolas Baden. See also Cape Grim Massacre Cyprus Mutiny Colony of Tasmania Governors of Tasmania Van Diemen's Land Company Apostolic Vicariate of New Holland and Van Diemen's Land Catholic Missionary Jurisdiction Notes References Alexandra, Reek, Editor, 2005, The Companion to Tasmanian History Center for Tasmanian Historical Studies, University of Tasmania, Hobart. ISBN 1-86295-223-X. Boyce, James, 2008, Van Diemen's Land. Black Inc., Melbourne. ISBN 978-1-86395-413-6. Robson, L. L. A History of Tasmania. Volume 1. Van Diemen's Land from the Earliest Times to 1855 Melbourne, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-554364-5. Robson, L. L. A History of Tasmania. Volume 2. Colony and State from 1856 to the 1980s Melbourne, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-553031-4. External links Media related to Van Diemen's Land at Wikimedia Commons Constitution Act 1855, establishing an elected parliament in the colony Van Diemen's Land. Com. About Van Diemen's Land.